Hi there, I'm John Sauter with Sauter Engineering Corporation, and I'm here to give you a quick rundown of the latest test for assessing the slip resistance of flooring. Uh, it utilizes the uh, British Pendulum Slip Resistance Test Device, ASTM E303-22, which was published in June of 2022. The test method has been updated so that it is for the use of testing the slip resistance of both floors and roads. Um, this instrument has been testing floors uh, for over 50 years now, and it has a published peer-reviewed test standard in at least 50 nations. It is easily the most reliable and most well-trusted instrument for assessing slip resistance of floors for both in, the, in and out of the lab. Set this instrument up so that it does not touch the floor. We are going to get a reading of zero over and over and over again. And if we don't, we can adjust the friction ring, rings here. What this instrument's really doing is taking the edge of a shoe, rubber, and we're gonna travel across the floor for five inches. If the floor is slippery, then it's gonna come up here and the pendulum arm is gonna give us a reading of five, 10, 15, 20. If the floor is slip resistant, then the rubber is going to have a hard time getting across the floor. It's going to get caught up and give us a reading of 45, 55, something like that. So what we have is standard shoe sole simulating rubber or 4S rubber for testing most floors. For uh, testing barefoot areas and generally for testing roads, we use what's called soft shoe sole simulating rubber, or it's also called transport and road laboratories rubber. And that's a softer rubber that mimics bare feet or car tires in the case of testing roads. Um, we're gonna prepare the slider using 400 grit paper um, from 3M. Because if I tested a smooth polished lobby floor last test, or I tested the sidewalk, which is uh, very rough, then my slider will be left in various conditions after that test. So we smooth it out with this 400 grit paper so that we know the rubber edge is in the exact same condition every time I start to test a new surface. And we have a ruler here that comes with it, with the pendulum, and that's 124 to 126 millimeters or five inches. So we get the, uh, the foot so that it's going to travel across the 400 grit paper for this five inches. And then we lock the locking knob on the back. And then we do three passes across the 400 grit paper. Move the pendulum arm down so that we are now going to have the rubber go across the surface of the flooring that we're testing for the five inches. We wet the surface and we get a 48 and we get a 48. So we throw those first two away and then we average the next five. And we will get a 47. We're wetting the surface in between each test. That's another 47. 48. 48. And finally, a 48. So the average would be a 48 of our five readings. Anything above 36, we consider to have low slip potential. That's the minimum for low slip potential. Between 25 and 35, pendulum test value is moderate slip potential. Anything below 25 would be considered a, a slippery floor or high risk potential for, for slip. The Australian standard uh, published several years ago uh, gives recommendations for different areas of a building, which is awesome. The Australian standard will say uh, you need a 45 for a pool deck, a 35 for the uh, grocery store produce aisle, and you can have a 12 um, in most of the other grocery store aisles because those areas aren't getting wet and employees are picking up any spills. And so, uh, you know, you don't necessarily need all floors in the world to be slip resistant, but what you do want is to get the truth based on 50 years of international research. And that's what the pendulum tester does. Um, after we're done doing our, our test, what we can do is raise our um, pendulum arm back up so that it's not touching the floor again. Um, 
lock the locking knob and then give it another swing and confirm that we're back, we're at zero. So um, after testing floors myself all over North America, Mexico, Canada, Hawaii, New York, Florida, um, doing interlaboratory studies, uh, this is easily the, the device that I trust the most to give me the truth. So ASTM E303 was originally published in 1993 and a precision statement was approved by the ASTM at, at that time. But we've gotten much more precise with uh, the 2022 version of ASTM E303-22. Um, within the standard, there's a way of verifying your instrument. We want to get a between a 5 and a 10 on a piece of glass. Uh, on pink polishing paper or pink lapping film, we want to get between 59 and 64. And then uh, English and European uh, pendulum manufacturers can supply this tile, which has uh, a reading between 32 and 36. But, um, we calibrate pendulums here at Solder Engineering. And so if you're not getting those results, you know your pendulum is not properly calibrated. But if you are getting those results, then you know that your instrument is working properly and you've gotten uh, three different readings that uh, can verify that your pendulum is getting the same results that an uh, English pendulum, an Australian pendulum, or any other pendulum around the world is getting on these three samples. We perform uh, lab and field slip resistance testing services all over North America and beyond. Feel free to give us a call or an email. The website is safetydirectamerica.com. Thanks for listening and have a safe and pleasure-filled day.